Charlotte's Web today. We're going to look over homework from 19, read 20. It's a good chapter, and we'll kind of ask some questions while we're reading, and then we'll look at the homework. Chapter 19, we learned that Charlotte's going to have 514 spiders hatching in the spring. And Charlotte's kind of feeling, like, worried for her future, right? She might be sad, too, a little bit. She's worried about her babies, and she's kind of sad about to, that she's not going to be around to see them. And I think Charlotte may, unfortunately, pass away or die because she's starting to feel weaker and kind of slower, and she's not doing as much. Right? And she's kind of given us kind of clues along the way to know that she's not doing well. Wilbur didn't win the blue ribbon, but everyone was rejoicing because Wilbur will win a special award. He's going to win a special award, so everyone's celebrating. So, let's read chapter 20. Go ahead and find your book. And to page, let's see, it's on page 155, chapter 20, the hour of triumph. Do you know what triumph means? It means like you kind of succeeded. If you're triumphant, you've succeeded. You won. It's the end. It's the hour of triumph. We're going to have a character in here. Have an hour of triumph. Uh, what do you think is going to have that hour of triumph? Let's read and see if you're right. Special announcement, said the loudspeaker in a pompous voice. The management of the fair takes great pleasure in presenting Mr. Homer L. Zuckerman and his famous pig. The truck bearing this extraordinary animal is now approaching the infield. Kindly stand back and give the truck room to proceed. In a few moments, the pig will be unloaded in the special judging ring in front of the grandstand, where a special award will be made. Will the crowd please make way and let the truck pass? Thank you. Wilbur trembled when he heard this speech. He felt happy but dizzy. The truck crept along slowly and low speed. Crowds of people surrounded it. Mr. and Mrs. Air Mr. Arable had to drive very carefully in order not to run over anybody. At last, he managed to reach the judge's stand. Avery jumped out and lowered the tailgate. I'm scared to death, whispered Mrs. Zuckerman. Hundreds of people are looking at us. Cheer up, replied Mrs. Arable. This is fun. Unload your pig, please, said the loudspeaker. All together now, boys, said Mr. Zuckerman. Several men stepped forward from the crowd to help lift the crate. Avery was the busiest helper of all. Tuck in your shirt, Avery, cried Mrs. Zuckerman, and tighten your belt. Your pants are coming down. Can't you see I'm busy? replied Avery in disgust. Look, cried Fern, pointing. There's Henry. Don't shout, Fern, said her mother, and don't point. Can I please have some money? asked Fern. Henry invited me to go on the Ferris wheel again, only I don't think he has any money left. He ran out of money. Mrs. Arable opened her handbag. Here, she said, here's 40 cents. Now don't get lost and be back at our regular meeting place by the pig pen very soon. Fern raced off, tucking and dodging through the crowd in search of Henry. The Zuckerman pig is now being taken from his crate, boomed the voice on the loudspeaker. Stand by for an announcement. Templeton crouched under the straw at the bottom of the crate. What a lot of nonsense, muttered the rat. What a lot of fuss about nothing. Over in the pig pen, silent and alone, Charlotte rested. Her two front legs embraced the egg sack. Charlotte could hear everything that was said on the loudspeaker. The words gave her courage. This was her hour of triumph. Did you guess that it was going to be Charlotte's hour of triumph? Why is it Charlotte's hour and not Wilbur's hour? Because Charlotte was trying all along to save Wilbur, right? Wilbur was just kind of there and to looking like what the web was saying. But Charlotte's really the one who did all the work, so she gets kind of that success, right? As Wilbur came out of the crate, the crowd clapped and cheered. Mr. Zuckerman took off his cap and bowed. Lurvie pulled his big handkerchief from his pocket and wiped the seat from the back of his neck. Avery knelt in the dirt by Wilbur's side, busily stroking him and showing off. Mrs. Zuckerman and Mrs. Arabelle stood on the running board of the truck. Ladies and gentlemen, said the loudspeaker, we now present Mr. Homer L. Zuckerman's distinguished pig. The fame of this unique animal has spread to the far corners of the earth, attracting many valuable tourists to our great state. 
Many of you will recall that never-to-be-forgotten day last summer when the writing appeared mysteriously on the spider's web in Mr. Zuckerman's barn, calling the attention of all and sundry to the fact that this pig was completely out of the ordinary. This miracle has never been fully explained, although learned men have visited the Zuckerman pig pen to study and observe the phenomenon. In the last analysis, we simply know that we are dealing with supernatural forces here. And we should all feel proud and grateful. In the words of the spider's web, ladies and gentlemen, this is some pig. Wilbur blushed. He stood perfectly still and tried to look his best. This magnificent animal, continued the loudspeaker, is truly terrific. Look at him, ladies and gentlemen. Note the smoothness and whiteness of the coat. Observe the spotless skin, the healthy pink glow of ears and snout. It's the buttermilk whispered Mrs. Arabelle to Mrs. Zuckerman. Note the general radiance of this animal. Then remember the day when the word radiant appeared clearly on the web. Whence came this mysterious writing? Not from the spider. We can rest assured of that. Spiders are very clever at weaving their webs, but needless to say, spiders cannot write. Oh, they can't, can't they? murmured Charlotte to herself. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, continued the loudspeaker, I must not take any more of your valuable time. On behalf of the governors of the fair, I have the honor of awarding a special prize of $25 to Mr. Zuckerman, together with a handsome bronze medal suitably engraved, in token of our appreciation of the part played by this pig, this radiant, this terrific, this humble pig in attracting so many visitors to our great county fair. Wilbur had been feeling dizzier and dizzier through this long, complimentary speech. When he heard the crowd begin to cheer and clap again, he suddenly fainted away. His legs collapsed, his mind went blank, and he fell to the ground, unconscious. Why is he fainting? Remember, Wilbur's pretty humble, right? He doesn't like all the attention. He never gets big-headed, right, about it? So I think this is just too much for him. He's like, oh my gosh, now we want all this money and this award. Well, oh, so much going on. What's wrong? asked the loudspeaker. What's going on, Zuckerman? What's the trouble with your pig? Avery was kneeling by Wilbur's head, stroking him. Mr. Zuckerman was dancing about, fanning him with his cap. He's all right, cried Mr. Zuckerman. He gets these spells. He's modest and can't stand praise. Well, we can't give a prize to a dead pig, said the loudspeaker. It's never been done. He isn't dead, hollered Zuckerman. He's fainted. He gets embarrassed easily. Run for some water, Lurby. Lurby sprang from the judge's ring and disappeared. Templeton poked his head from the straw. He noticed that the end of Wilbur's tail was within reach. Templeton grinned. I'll tend to this, he chuckled. He took Wilbur's tail in his mouth and bit it just as hard as he could bite. The pain revived Wilbur. In a flash, he was back on his feet. Ouch, he screamed. Hooray! yelled the crowd. He's up! The pig's up! Good work, Zuckerman! That's some pig! Everyone was delighted. Mr. Zuckerman was the most pleased of all. He sighed with relief. Nobody had seen Templeton. The rat had done his work well. And now one of the judges climbed into the ring with the prizes. He handed Mr. Zuckerman two ten-dollar bills and, five, and a five-dollar bill. Then he tied the medal around Wilbur's neck. Then he shook hands with Mr. Zuckerman while Wilbur blushed. Avery put out his hand and the judge shook hands with him, too. The crowd cheered. A photographer took Wilbur's picture. A great feeling of happiness swept over the Zuckermans and the Arabels. This was the greatest moment in Mr. Zuckerman's life. It is deeply satisfying to win a prize in front of a lot of people. As Wilbur was being shoved back into the crate, Lurby came charging through the crowd carrying a pail of water. His eyes had a wild look. Without hesitating a second, he dashed the water at Wilbur. In his excitement, he missed his aim, and the water splashed all over Mr. Zuckerman and Avery. They got soaking wet. For goodness sakes, uh, bellowed Zuckerman, who was really drenched. What ails you, Lurvy? Can't you see the pig is all right? You asked for water, said Lurvy meekly. I didn't ask for a shower bath, uh, said Mr. Zuckerman. The crowd roared with laughter. Finally, Mr. Zuckerman had to laugh, too. And, of course, Avery was tickled to find himself so wet, and he immediately started to act like a clown. He pretended he was taking a shower bath. 
He made faces and danced around and rubbed imaginary soap under his armpits. Then he dried himself with an imaginary towel. Avery, stop it, cried his mother. Stop showing up. But the crowd loved it. Avery heard nothing but the applause. He liked being a clown in a rain, with everybody watching in front of a grandstand. When he discovered that there was still a little water left in the bottom of the pail, he raised the pail high in the air and dumped the water on himself and made faces. The children in the grandstand screamed with appreciation. The, at last, things calmed down. Wilbur was loaded into the truck. Avery was led from the ring by his mother and placed on the seat of the truck to dry off. The truck, driven by Mr. Airbell, crawled slowly back to the pig pen. Avery's wet trousers made a big wet spot on the seat. Oh my goodness. So notice at the end of that chapter, though, somebody was missing from all that action. Who's missing? Fern's missing. Where did Fern go? She went off with Henry Fossey, didn't she? Ooh, I think Fern's got a little crushed. Do you think so, too? Do you think Dr. Dorian was right? That Mrs. Nearbell didn't need to worry that she would soon kind of move on from the pig and the, all the animals at the farm? I think so, too, because Wilbur's getting the special prize, and she's like, um, I'm going to go on and go away with Henry Fussy instead of hanging around with Wilbur. Maybe Fern is growing up. Hmm. All right, let's look at Chapter 20's homework. So I'm going to go like this and view it this way instead so it's a little easier to see. So to do this, we're going to put the order, uh, the events in the correct order. So you might want to read through them all first and think, where did they happen in the story, in the chapter? So Lurvy sprang from the judge's reign to get some water. Did that happen more one towards the beginning or was that kind of later? That was later, so you're going to start thinking it's towards this end, okay? Avery acted like a clown and made the crowd laugh. That was more towards the end, too. When was that? At, before or after Lurvy sprain from the judge's ring? Okay. Templeton bit Wilbur's tail to revive him when he fainted. When did that happen in regards to all of those? Wilbur felt very dizzy and fainted. The announcer praised Wilbur and talked about his prize, and Lurvy threw the water on them. And the last part of your homework is a little different this time. On a piece of loosely paper, you're going to illustrate your favorite part of the chapter. And you can either turn in in class to your paper or upload a picture to the Google Classroom assignment to, and turn it in with that. All right. So it should be a little detailed. Okay, it shouldn't just be like just stick people. Okay, give me a fourth grade quality drawing. Let me know if you have questions. Otherwise, uh, good luck on putting your um, events in order and drawing your favorite part from the chapter. There's a lot to choose from. Take care.